You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on the new tyre labelling rules. Many of us own a car, some may even be coming back from a summer road trip, but how many know how well their tyres perform on wet or extremely hot roads, or how much noise they make? The answer is not many, but this may change soon if the new EU rules on tyre labelling go ahead. Want to know more? Stay with us. Did you know that road transport accounts for over a fifth of the EU's total greenhouse gas emissions and that tyres account for 20 to 30 percent of a vehicle's fuel consumption? This means that more fuel efficient tyres could significantly reduce energy consumption in the EU. That's correct. And this is why in May 2018, the European Commission proposed new rules on tyre labelling as part of a broader package of measures on low carbon mobility. The idea is to give consumers more information on fuel efficiency, safety and noise when they buy tyres and to ensure that labels provide accurate, relevant and comparable information on these aspects. The Commission hopes this will help improve the effectiveness of tyre labelling so as to ensure cleaner, safer and quieter vehicles and to maximise the label's contribution to the decarbonisation of the transport sector. Since 2005, energy consumption in transport has declined far less than in other key sectors. And with passenger transport expected to increase by over 40% by 2050, improving fuel efficiency in the EU transport sector has become a top priority for the EU, which is seeking to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by over 40% by 2030, compared to 1990 levels. Next to increasing consumer awareness of tyre labelling, the proposed new rules also seek to improve market surveillance and enforcement of labelling provisions across the Union. But how does it work now? Stay with us. Tyre labelling forms part of EU legislation on the energy efficiency of products. This includes eco-design regulations which set minimum requirements that energy-related products must satisfy before they can be placed on the Union market and energy labelling regulations which provide consumers with information on the energy consumption and other essential aspects of products, helping them to make smart choices when buying products. Current tyre labelling rules cover tyres for passenger cars, light and heavy commercial vehicles, but while information on fuel efficiency, wet grip and external rolling noise must be displayed on the label for passenger cars and light domestic vehicles, tyres for heavy trucks are excluded from the labelling obligation. Under the existing rules, retailers are not obliged to show the label in online stores. Furthermore, tyres are not visible in many physical shops and in such cases, there is currently no obligation for the label to be shown. For tyres sold with a new car, current rules only include a requirement to provide information where buyers are offered a choice between different tyres, which does not happen very often. But this would all change with the new rules, as they would oblige suppliers to display the tyre label in all forms of purchase, including where the tyre is not physically shown in the store and where it is sold online or on a long-distance basis. Whereas the label is currently only required for tyres for passenger and light-duty vehicles, in the future it would also apply to tyres for heavy-duty vehicles. The new label would also include visual information on tyre performance in snow or ice conditions and could be adjusted later to include information on mileage, abrasion or restarted tyres. Some outdated label scales for the three main parameters would be readjusted in order to account for technical improvements and other developments. And from 2020, all tyre labels would be included in the product registration database being set up as part of the revised EU framework for energy efficiency labelling in order to improve market surveillance and enforcement. According to an impact assessment carried out by the European Commission, the proposed changes could result in 7 billion euros of energy savings, a 10 million tonne reduction in CO2 emissions and an increased turnover of 9 billion euros in the manufacturing, wholesale and retail sectors. These are substantial benefits, but how has the proposal been received by stakeholders and other EU institutions? Well, a public consultation organised by the Commission in 2017 revealed that industry, NGOs and consumer associations shared the same views in many areas. They agreed, for instance, that label information should always be provided before purchase, that member states should run more awareness campaigns and that online labelling would improve the visibility of the label. 
They also agreed that information on snow and ice performance of a tyre should be included on the label, but there were also some areas of disagreement, notably on the need for external verification of label testing and stronger market surveillance. But that's part of the political debate. It just can't please everyone. No, it can't. The Commission proposal will not be negotiated and revised by Council and Parliament before it becomes EU law, so if they are finally agreed, the new tyre labelling rules could come into force in 2020. You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts.